All right, so here's uh, example two with the second derivative test. So it's going to be a little more complicated than example one, um, but the same instructions. Find where the local extrema occur for this function y equals x to the fourth times e to the negative 2x. Okay, so let's just jump right in there. So um, again, step zero, it's in these brackets here, because it's not really as important for the second derivative test, but we should always keep in the back of our mind uh, what the domain of our function is. So here, <clears throat> uh, x to the fourth is just a simple polynomial. Uh, and e to the negative 2x is a simple exponential function. So polynomial times exponential with uh, nothing else crazy happening. So the domain is just all real numbers. So that's good. It makes things a little easier on us, kind of. So uh, the real step here is step one, uh, find all the critical points of f of x. So we did do that uh, when we went through the same example for the first derivative test. We did do that, but we'll just go through it again here um, so you don't have to keep switching back and forth between videos. So. Uh, this is a product rule thing, right? So the product rule says derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. So we're going to do a product rule with uh, this is our first function and this is our second function. Okay. So derivative of the first is 4x cubed, and then we multiply by the second, okay, and then plus uh, the first function times the derivative of the second. So e to the negative 2x, that's going to be a chain rule thing when we take a derivative. So it's e to the negative 2x times the derivative of negative 2x, which is negative 2. Okay, so let's simplify that a little bit. So we have 4x cubed uh, e to the negative 2x, and then uh, this is going to be minus 2x to the fourth e to the negative 2x. Okay. So now we want to find the critical points, which means uh, where is the derivative 0, where is it undefined? Well, it's undefined nowhere, okay, because, you know, this is just polynomials and exponentials being multiplied and added and subtracted and all that. So nothing crazy happening, so we don't have to worry about anything being undefined, which is good. So we just want to take this, set it equal to 0. But before we do that, uh, let's, you know, simplify and factor and everything. So are there any common factors we can pull out? Well, 4x cubed e to the negative 2x and this term has minus 2x to the fourth e to the negative 2x. So 4 is 2 times 2. Okay, so we have a common factor 2 we can pull out. x cubed x to the fourth. Okay, there's a common factor of x cubed we can pull out. And then e to the negative 2x, e to the negative 2x, we can pull out uh, that also, which is great. Alright, so if we factor 2x cubed e to the negative 2x out of this whole thing, what's left? What's left in the first term? Well, we pulled out 2x cubed e to the negative 2x, so the only thing left is just an extra factor of 2 from the 4. Okay, and then minus, we pulled out 2x cubed e to the negative 2x, so the only thing left is just another factor of x. Okay. Now we can take this and set it equal to 0. So uh, 2x cubed e to the negative 2x uh, times the quantity 2 minus x uh, equals 0. Okay, so you got some things being multiplied together, uh, which equals 0. So either this equals 0 or uh, this equals 0, right? So um, let's look at the second one real quick. So if 2 minus x equals 0, uh, what does that mean? That means 2 equals x, or in other words, x equals 2. So uh, x equals 2 is one critical point, okay? That's one of our critical points. Uh, now from here, we're going to get another one. So let's take 2x cubed e to the negative 2x and set that equal to 0, okay? So the 2, we can just divide both sides by 2 and totally forget about it. So if we divide both sides by 2, 2 just goes away. Uh, okay. So x cubed e to the negative 2x equals 0. So either x cubed is 0 or e to the negative 2x is 0. Now if you think back to your pre-calculus days, um, e to the negative 2x can never be 0. Okay, so either x cubed equals 0 or e to the negative 2x equals 0. But um, <clears throat> 0 is not in the range of this function, so that's a pre-calculus thing there. So this could never happen for real numbers x. Okay, this never happens. So x cubed must be 0, which means x is 0. And that's our other critical point. So 0 and 2 are the only critical points here. Okay. So that's it for step 1, find all the critical points. Now step 2 is find the second derivative. So uh, in example 1, that wasn't really too bad, but in this example, it's going to be a little more complicated. So let's, um, let's erase this stuff here. We'll make a note, uh, make a note of our critical points, 0 and 2. Okay, make a note of those. And then we're going to use, uh, let's use this form of the first derivative to find the second derivative. 
So our first derivative is you know this. We could use this if we wanted to, but then we'll have a product rule with two different terms. So product rule here, product rule here, and it's going to get kind of messy. Um, but here we have a product rule with three uh, with three factors, but only one term. So that's good. Okay, this is all just one term, but still three factors. But uh, it's good to get some practice with stuff like that. So let's go ahead and do that. So y double primed. Um, now, if we do the product rule with three functions, three factors here, uh, what's that going to be? Well, first, this is our first function here. Here's our second one, and here's our third one. So, product rule with three factors says derivative of the first times the second times the third. Okay. Derivative of the first times the second function times the third function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function, which we've already done. Okay, derivative of the second function is e to the negative 2x, and then chain rule says multiply by negative 2, because that's the derivative of negative 2x. And then uh, times the third function. Okay. So derivative of the first function times the second function times the third function plus first function times derivative of the second function times the third function, and then uh, plus the first function times the second function, oops, first function times the second function times the derivative of the third function. So the derivative of 2 minus x is just 0 minus 1, so times uh, minus 1 here. Okay. So let's uh, zoom out a bit here so we can see everything. Okay. So, you know, it's kind of nasty. It's not really too complicated. You just have to remember how to do a product rule with uh, three functions. And we did talk about that in a much earlier video, uh, if you want to check that out. So, um, let's, let's simplify this a little bit. We don't have to simplify too much, you know, the way we simplify this and factored everything like that. We don't have to do that, because eventually all we have to do is just evaluate the second derivative. So we don't have to do anything else crazy like setting it equal to zero, nothing like that. We just want to evaluate it. So let's just simplify it just a little bit. So uh, we'll zoom back in here and just look at it term by term. 6x squared e to the negative 2x times the quantity 2 minus x. Uh, not much we can do with that. We'll just leave it like that. Times uh, 2 minus x. Okay, now what about this uh, term here? Plus 2x cubed times e to the negative 2x times negative 2 times the quantity 2 minus x. Well, uh, let's do something with this negative 2 here. So if we're multiplying all this by negative 2, we can turn this into a minus 4. So this will be a minus 4x cubed e to the negative 2x uh, times the quantity 2 minus x. Okay, so that's good. That simplifies that a little bit. Uh, and then let's look at this last term here. So this is nice. Uh, plus 2x cubed e to the negative 2x times negative 1. So this becomes uh, minus, okay, minus uh, 2x cubed e to the negative 2x. Okay. So that's our second derivative here. We'll zoom back out just a bit. Okay, here's our second derivative. Uh, 6x squared e to the negative 2x times 2 minus x minus 4x cubed e to the negative 2x times 2 minus x minus 2x cubed e to the negative 2x. Okay, so that's it for step two. Uh, find the second derivative. Okay, find f double prime of x, or in this case, just y double prime is what we're calling it. Because um, our original function was just y. So this uh, step two was a little bit more complicated than it was in example one, right? Um, but still not too bad. It could get a little bit worse, as we'll see. But anyway, let's go to step three now. Uh, evaluate the second derivative at each critical point where the first derivative exists. Okay? So we only had two critical points, uh, x equals 0 and 2. And the first derivative did exist at both of those, right? So we just want to find out what's y double prime to 0, what's y double prime to 2. So let's go ahead and figure that out. Um, block off some space here. So we want to evaluate y double prime to 0. So uh, let's go back to our second derivative here. So we have three terms to look at, right? This minus that minus that. So when x is 0, what's happening? 6 times 0 squared times who cares what the rest is, because this is already 0. So this first term is just 0. Minus 4 times 0 cubed times who cares what the rest is, because this is already 0 now because of the x cubed. So minus 0. 
Let's see, we ended up with minus zero. Uh, and then here, minus two times zero cubed uh, times again, who cares what the rest is? Okay, uh, so this whole term is just zero. So we end up with minus zero again. Okay, so zero minus zero minus zero is just zero. And if you're thinking ahead a little bit, uh, yeah, that's bad. Okay, because if you do the second derivative test and you get zero, um, you know, if the second derivative equals zero, we have to try something else. But let's not jump too far ahead yet. Uh, let's evaluate the second derivative at two also. So y double prime to two. Now, this looks like it might be kind of bad, but it's actually going to work out pretty nicely. So 6 times 2 squared times e to the negative 2 times 2 times the quantity 2 minus 2. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0, so this whole term is just 0. So that's, uh, that's great. That's great. Now, how about this? Minus 4 times 2 cubed times e to the negative 2 times 2. Again, times the quantity 2 minus 2. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0, so this whole term is just 0. So that's uh, great. Now here, uh, we have minus 2 times 2 cubed times e to the negative 2 times 2. So this is going to be minus 2 times 8 times e to the negative 4. Okay. So this is uh, minus 2 times 8 times e to the negative 4. Okay. So uh, let's simplify that a little bit. That's uh, 0 minus 0 minus 2 times 8 times e to the negative 4. That's negative 16 e to the negative 4. Okay. So that's it for step three. Evaluate the second derivative at each critical point C where f prime to C exists. So um, now we go to step four. And step four is basically just apply the second derivative test. So if the second derivative exists, uh, which it does, right? Zero, negative 16 e to the negative four. So the second derivative does exist at both of these points, zero and two. Um, then just apply the second derivative test here. Uh, is the second derivative positive? Is it negative? Is it zero? So here, uh, the second derivative was zero. So that's really bad for us um, because that tells us that the second derivative test is inconclusive, is what we say. Okay. So what that means is we have to go back and do the first derivative test. So you know we did all this work here only to end up with this inconclusive result here uh, for this critical point. So we will have to go back and do the first derivative test, which we did do in an earlier video. And if you want to refer back to that, uh, you'll see that this actually is a local min. But we have no way of telling that from the second derivative test. Uh, the second derivative test tells us absolutely nothing. Okay, uh, from here all we can say uh, is there might be a min, there might be a max, there might be neither. So really we can't say anything except that we have to go back and try the first derivative test. Um, so that's bad here. So uh, what about this one here? Well, negative 16 e to the negative 4, what kind of number is that? Negative 16 is a negative number, e to the negative 4 is a positive number, okay, a uh, really small positive number. Negative number times a positive number is a negative number. Okay. So since the value of the second derivative is a negative number, then we have this case here, f double prime to c is negative, less than zero. So that means we have a local max at this value of c. Okay, in this case, the c is two. Okay, c is two. Okay, so uh, this tells us, so let's just go ahead and write that down. Uh, so our original function of y has a local max at x equals 2. Okay. Now I do want to point out, uh, so we kind of just briefly mentioned it, but if you are doing this on a quiz or a test or a homework assignment or something, uh, it's not okay to just stop here um, because the original instruction said find where the local extrema occur for this function. So we found one, but uh, you know this one here, we don't know what's happening at 0. Just from the second derivative test, we don't know what's happening here at uh, x equals 0. So we have to go back and try the first derivative test. So yeah, we did do all this work for the second derivative test, uh, only to find out that we're going to have to do the first derivative test anyway. Uh, so that's, you know, and it's not okay to just stop here because we don't know anything here. We haven't answered the question completely. Um, but again, we did do this in an earlier video, and we do have a local min here at uh, x equals zero. We do have a local min there. Um, but we just can't tell that from the second derivative test. So um, this is one example where, you know, the second derivative test wasn't really too bad. It's a little more complicated than the first derivative test. Uh, and it does have that downside that, you know, it could be inconclusive, and that's what happened here. So we did all this work with the second derivative test only to find out we have to do the first derivative test anyway. So uh, that could happen with the second derivative test, uh, which is a pretty major downside. But, you know, when the second derivative test is better, sometimes it, you know, it could be really just a whole lot better than the first derivative test. 
But anyway, we'll talk a little more about that in a later video. Um, so this is example two. So inconclusive result, which means go back to the first derivative test, uh, which we won't do in this video because we've already done it in an earlier video. And then uh, for this one, we found out that we do have a local max at x equals two. And again, we're only asking uh, where the max and mins occur. We don't care what they are, just where they occur. And we know we have a max at two, x equals two. So that's example two. Um, and again, to find out what's happening here, you have to do something else. That's what the second derivative test just told us. So example three in the next video.